This NorthJerseySports.com multimedia presentation is brought to you by Classic Mortgage. Need financing for a new home? Want to refinance the one you already have? Classic Mortgage has you covered. Specializing in all types of mortgages, FHA, Veterans Administration, new construction, traditional and more, Classic Mortgage has the keys. Talk to one of our home finance experts today. Call us, 201-906-7457, or visit our office at 25 East Spring Valley Avenue in Maywood. Open the door to your new place with Classic Mortgage, your hometown lender. We are talking baseball, NorthJerseySports.com's original multimedia series, talking all things about the great game of baseball across North Jersey. This is season two, episode six. This is crunch time. We're on the eve of the state sectional finals. I am Corey Doviak, and I had to go to the bullpen tonight. All year long, you have heard this. Paging Dr. Cirillo. And my esteemed co-host, Joe Sutera, unavailable tonight because he is the prom chaperone at Woodridge High School. So I'm going to the right-hander. I'm going to the former head baseball coach at Palisades Park Junior Senior High School, now the head muckety-muck at the same Institute of Higher Learning. He is Dr. Joseph Cirillo. What's up, Doc? Well, with an intro like that, I don't know what to say other than (laughs) Satara never, never should answer this call again. I agree. Nor should he ever be on the list to be a co-host unless and if. I'm not available. Wally I, Pip. One hundred percent I agree. I mean all year he's been hitting you with he this. Went to prom, Dr. Cirillo. But I he went to the prom. But the best part is he was also on Twitter asking Steve Weatherford of the New York Giants to take him. <laughs> this is getting completely out of hand with that name. Talks about you know, his it, son, his wife. I feel terrible for the family. Last you know, week it is I true. heard that Lisa and James were going to co-host. I'm just <laughs> grateful you didn't say you went down to AAA to pick me up. No, no. If just I'm went coming to the out of the bullpen, make believe I'm the closer, but I'll yeah. do the opening with you. Yes. Well, it is great to have you here. I mean, it's been a long time. You know, I think the last time you were on the show, we almost burned the thing down. Well, I was we had uh, with the FCC for a couple of years. So I think yes. you just let me out, and uh, now I'm available for you. So what's it been like now? You, you you put down the stopwatch, you put away the old baseball pants, and now you're in administration. Do you miss the game? The pants don't fit, actually. I put on a couple of pounds. I, I know. I've seen you in them. Well, you know, we're going out to lunch a lot more now than I ever did in my life. But with that being said, it's, uh, you know, I, 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 relate, I refer to myself these days as the general manager. Um, I think the bottom line becomes we go into this field of education to work with children, and now... You are the big shot. You are the big cheese. And you do the hiring no. and firing, and you you are free agent seasons right around the corner, every corner. That's a lot well, of fun, you, but it's also uh, very, very much a huge responsibility. Yeah, well, you're doing a great job down there at Palisades. All, all kidding aside, although this will be the last time that that happens tonight, doing a great job down there in Palisades Park, the greatest school district uh, in the history of Bergen County, it produces great product after great product, as I can attest. But i uh, got a cool thing coming up here on June 9th. And before we talk a little baseball, let's just talk a little bit. Of, well, we can throw some baseball in there, too, because we got some inductees. Sure. But sure. Pa- uh, Palisades Park High School having its first ever Hall of Fame induction class. And I understand you are a part of that, as am I. Yeah, well, you know, again, I needed a uh, an MC. And, uh, you know, who better? Than the voice well, you had a couple North guys that you Jersey thought were better, sport. to be honest. Yeah, I had a couple guys. Uh, you know, I didn't want to go there. I, I, I had a good guy in Corey Doviak. I had a guy who started his career at Palisades Park, who's been around the circle for the last 20 years or so, and uh, he knows his sports a little bit. A little so bit. we put together a committee, and uh, truth be told, about eight years ago, I sat down with John Robleski, who is a legend uh, not only in Palisades Park, but throughout the county and at the state level, um, an athletic director for 35 and a half years. And I said, why is there no Hall of Fame? This is a school district that really
really has had some phenomenal athletes um, in, in years past. And like everything else, it just it was never, you know, in reality, really put together. Um, but after a little bit of research, after a lot of hard work, and after some very successful meetings, um, very successful meetings. We've been. I'm very pleased and, and encouraged to say that we are going to reinduct. Um, and I say reinduct loosely because there were two, I think, inductions in the early '80s um, with not much fanfare. Um, so right. the truth is, those individuals need to be re-recognized, as well as some of the true. Uh, Mount Rushmore's of Palisades Park, um, John Robleski once again, Frank Donahue, and none other than the incumbent, Mr. Mark Sieslak, Um who, The great. The uh, great. Well, Mark. I'm glad you said it, because if I said it, then he'd probably add me to his staff next year. And I don't think I have this time yet, but, you know, who the hell knows? With that guy, yeah, anything's it, possible. It's going to be fun. It's going to be June 9th at the Fiesta. Uh, and anybody Pal Park related who is listening to this edition of Talking Baseball here on NorthJerseySports.com, go to the Palisades Park High School website, get your form, come out. It's going to be a good old-fashioned Pal Park evening. Uh, we will have some fun. But we're also going to have some fun talking some uh, state tournament baseball here. We got Joe Gambardella, the Ridgefield head coach, will be joining us shortly here as we preview some of these state sectional finals that are going on here. And uh, I, there are some of uh, a lot of local interest here. We have yep. in North One Group 1, we have Emerson and Hawthorne, two local teams going at it. North One Group 2, we have Ramsey and Lakeland playing. In North One Group 3, the NorthJerseySports.com coverage area is represented by Riverdale and Union City in North One Group 4. And, Joe, I know that's near and dear to your heart, you being a Hudson County guy and all. It sure is. Uh, you know, I think Union City does a phenomenal job year in and year out. I think it was a matter of time, um, you know, considering Emerson and Union Hill combining a couple of years back. Yeah. That's just a it's a hotbed, obviously. I know the football program has excelled the last couple of years. Um, but, you know, it's a very, very – large and uh, predominant Hispanic community that is passionate about their baseball and they are showing their their true colors this year, obviously, in the state finals there, sectional, excuse me. Baseball on the roof. Can't yes, beat sir. that. Yes, sir. And we will get into North One, uh, North 2 Group 1 deeply here in a moment when we bring our guest on, but I should mention that the other half of the matchup, now I said Union City was near and dear to your heart, Weehawken, the number six seed, the bracket buster, North 2 Group 1, Heading to the finals, also the alma mater of one Dr. Joseph Cirillo. What do you think of that, pal? Uh, who the hell knows? I think uh, anyone that's got to play Gambardella these days is probably, you know, in trouble. But with that being said, uh, you know, a good friend of mine, Anthony Stratton, I can't believe I just said he's a good friend of mine. I am glad yeah, he's I the still, one who almost got I'm glad I still have a couple of years left on my contract. <laughs> um, but Anthony is and has done a great job with what, you know, the, the group he's dealt with every year. They work hard, scrappy. Um, you know, I talked to him early in the year, and he was telling me how they just can't hit the ball, they can't feel the ball, they can't throw the ball. And now they're playing Richfield in the sectional final. So I don't know what the hell he's talking about. Uh, maybe it was at his son's game or something, and he was telling me that. But, uh yeah, I think it's going to be a fantastic ball game. I think Joey's uh, done a great job in a couple of years there. Um, but, again, it's what you put into anything. He's put in the time, and his kids are obviously uh, displaying the fruits of the labor there. All right, now I'm going to put you, uh, ask you to put your administrator's hat back on here. Sure. When we talk about the non-publics, you got uh, Bosco, Bergen, and St. Joe's, the big three in Bergen County, all won their opening round games in the non-public uh, quarterfinals, they're on through to the semis. Don Bosco Prep, Bergen Catholic, and St. Joseph, all three made the Final Four of the Bergen County Tournament. Uh, it was an all-parochial final. Bosco won again this year. I got some tape I'm going to play after we get done interviewing Joe Gambardella just to uh, go back and take a quick look back at the Bergen County Tournament. I know it was, uh, we're, doing the, we're taping the show on Thursday night. That all happened on Sunday, but I still want to touch on it. It's only fair, but... Uh, from your the administrative point of view, what do you make what do you make of all this stuff going on? How how deeply involved can you get uh, as a superintendent with what's going on 
trying to split up the parochials and the pu- and the uh, publics. You know, I, I will tell you, we have our monthly meetings with superintendents, and there is discussion, and a constant discussion amongst, uh, you know, colleagues is, um, you know, that the parochials have distanced themselves. It's, it's obviously a safety issue many a time. Um, I will, as a small group one school, tell you that we are not necessarily as much involved in those discussions yet. Um, but, right. you know, the bigger schools, obviously, this is something that they're, they're dealing with in all sports. And, you know, I completely understand. I think a couple of years ago, prior to our football program turning the corner, you know, we, we had to make a tough decision. But uh, it, it was a decision what to go JV because we were right. fielding a football program that had um, a, an issue with not only numbers, but size. And when you talk a sport of football, you know, safety is always and shall be at the forefront. Um, it, it becomes, a, a obviously, a major, major concern. Um, and I'm not sure. Again, I know we read about it all. What do those programs get out of, you know, two quarters or a half? Again, it's, it's, I'm sure they would much rather sometimes play more competitive and, and a better balanced schedule as well. Yes, I but will say this from my correct answer. I couldn't tell you what I really felt, but <laughs> it is what it is, well, and that's the reality. I will, I will say this from just covering the Bergen County baseball tournament, uh, start to finish. You know, the, Bosco is the best team, but I, I feel see, I would hate for it to be broken up on the county level. And yes, they have separated themselves. I mean, we went through it in the Jambo. Uh, you know, you go through it in not so much in the soccer tournament because the publics hold their own there. I'm talking all, all on the boys' side here because we're t- you know this is a, a baseball show. We're talking boys' sports. But and on the baseball side of it, listen, I, I don't I don't want to see them broken up because the story. And in, if you look at the quarterfinals, I mean, Riverdale, Mawa, and Ramsey all almost won. It was yeah. a pitch here, a bounce there, uh, whatever here. Yeah. And, and I, th- so I, think, you give, I think with all fairness, yeah. Corey, excuse me, but baseball yeah. is probably that one sport that you have. You have a phenomenal pitcher on the mound that has his best day of the year. You know, I think it could go any which way. But I any agree. other sport, I think you could make the argument, and I know Hudson County, and you think basketball, you think St. Anthony. And for right. a long time, there was no true county tournament. And there should not have been, because the reality yeah. is, Anthony's could have beaten anyone by a good 50 points if they wanted. And, and again, Hudson Catholic has come around, and a lot of programs have tried to, you know, just at the very least, be more competitive. But a county yep. tournament is a county tournament. Baseball, I would agree wholeheartedly, uh, you know, again, on any given day. I remember yep. when... Both the pair and had the seven Division One athletes. <laughs> you love to tell team. this story. I love to tell the story because it was only three one after four innings. And, <laughs> right, I didn't and then know what that, happened? I didn't know that they even showed up that day. But um, <laughs> you know, when you throw that high fastball to the number eight hitter at an O two count, and he turns on it, and it's now four to one, and it's over the left field fence. You remember that you played all the pan. and fortunately <laughs> enough, we played the full seven innings. But um, you know, again, a small school going up to Old Japan. Anything can happen on any day. Did we have a chance to win? We were there. We were at the ball field. Anyone has a chance to win. Yes. You're, no, you're right. All right. So we just got a. I just as I'm, as you're telling that beautiful story, just got a uh, text message from our former uh, co-host here on Talking Baseball. Do the show at eleven, and I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> Little does he realize the limousines don't pull out of the parking lot till midnight. And again, he's got to be back at school at 7.30. You know, he's living the life these days. But he's not telling you that he's ordering filet mignon tonight at the char- – where is he, at the Liberty House or something? Uh, and you know, I'm not sure where they do it. Well, we'll find out. Steve Weatherford, again, will post something on Twitter that he picked up Sutera in, in a convertible Mustang. Both of them will have matching teal bow ties. Incredible. <laughs> All right, let's move on here now from one Joe to another Joe and now to the third Joe as we welcome in Ridgefield head baseball coach Joe Gambardella joining us live on the Moe's Southwest Grill Hotline. Gams, what's going on, brother? Nothing much, man. Just sitting on my balcony. What's going on with you? Uh, we are sitting here doing talking baseball, but, you know, we had a change in plans. Our co-host, normal co-host, who has given up his seat this week, so that he could chaperone the Woodridge High School prom. He is unavailable. 
Joey so I Joey Fashion Show tonight is Joey Prom Chevron. Oh my God. Right. <laughs> How the mighty have fallen. But we do have another special guest host for you. Uh, you know what? Maybe we should play. You know what, Gams? If you had to take one guess as to who might the one guy I could reach out for, and maybe that would be able to fill the very small shoes left by Joe Satara, who do you think it might be? Jim Fusey. Uh I'm looking. I am furiously searching here for my game show buzzer. Let me see. I'll I'll, I'll use this instead. <laughs> You missed. All right. One more try, because now I found uh, my sound effect. I don't know, man. Barton. <laughs> Mystery co-host, would you like to say hello to our guest? Right he's right. obviously nervous before a big game tomorrow. I don't know what the hell he's worried about. But you know what? You better page someone. <laughs> if I were you, I'd page someone. Paging Dr. Cirillo. No way. Joe Cirillo in the house, Cam. What do you th- I brought him out of retirement, out of the administrative chair, and back on to talking baseball. That's what do you think of that? Unbelievable. Dr. Gambardella, how are you, sir? What's <laughs> going on? What's going on? Hey, not hey. only are you playing the alma mater tomorrow, not only are you going to win another trophy, but let me tell you something. <laughs> you forget the days when you were the crazy assistant down the sidelines doing push-ups while we were doing infield outfield. I did do that. To era, I don't know what happened to the guy, but whatever he's doing, he better continue to do it because... Not only is he, but the program has come full circle. You are doing a fantastic job. My only concern for you is, as I was approached to fill in for prom queen, <laughs> I was asked to try, because I am a wee walking boy, I was asked to You're try right. to get Mr. Anthony Stratton. He's in shop right aisle four. <laughs> the problem is, his wife told me he's now taken a part-time job as a bartender, and rumor has it, he's with the Richfield High School prom tonight. Yeah. Don't be surprised if you're <laughs> running a little funny in the morning. <laughs> this is going to get crazy. Let me tell you, he's not available, I'm available, and we've got to stay final tomorrow. What the hell is going on? <clears throat> Talk about it, Gams. You guys have had a great run uh, for the past few years, and the- just continuing. Last year, state final. This year, back to the state sectional final. Just give us a little state of the state on the Ridgefield. Road. I mean, it's just hard work, and it's a testament to the kids. It's nothing that I do special. It's just they're bought in. They work hard. They live in a weight room in the off season. I mean, it's a testament to them. Hard work, and you know what I mean. They love the game. They want to play with each other. They want to end this thing the right way. And I mean, I'm really proud of where they are right now. But we still got work to do. Would you like to say anything? You know, you have been the butt of a joke or two on this show this year. I know you're very tight with our former co-host, Joe Sutera, and he's been riding you hard. I mean, is there any rebuttal that you might like to just because, you know, you know he'll be in his office listening to this crying tomorrow. That, that's what he does, Sutera, but, I mean, we got Joey Fashion <laughs> Show and now Joey Prom Queen, so I don't think my rebuttal is necessary. <laughs> yeah, I leave him alone. Listen, you, seriously, you don't... take the high road. I've heard it, too. The guy was all over me, how Cal Park never beat New Milford, Cal Park. You know what? Shut up. When he went to Elmwood Park, the guy called me, please help me, please help me. You know what, Joe? I can't. All right, I'll go. I'll volunteer. We win. The next thing you know, Glenn Rock's got him by the Pauline. He goes over there. What does Elmwood Park do? Smacks him around again. But we never beat him. We never beat him. You know what? Stay at the prom, the era. That's what you know, I, I should I should mention this too. Last week on the show, we had a situation where uh, our former co-host lost his son. I just want to, if you haven't been listening, and you should be, you should be listening every week to every episode of Talking uh, Baseball. If you're missing old shows, you can visit our YouTube page at youtube.com slash North Jersey Sports. But hey, I should do a quick refresher here. Here is actual sound of Joseph Terra from last week when his when he realized that he no longer knew the whereabouts of his son. Hey, Core, yes. you're back. We can't find my son, James. i got to call you back. This <laughs> is not good. We're in panic mode right now. <laughs> Wait a minute. I was at his house here, this fella. weekend. I was at his I, house this weekend. Administrator. And his wife is bashing him because she's like, I'm calling him and I hear it beeping. He's doing effing talking baseball. Meanwhile, I can't find my son. <laughs> <laughs> and he was on the other line while she was beeping in. I reiterate, saying this. 
Hey, Core, yeah. you're back. We can't find my son, James. I got to call you back. This is not good. We're in panic mode right now. That's, that's <laughs> not good. We are in panic That's a mode tremendous right sound bite. Oh. That's beautiful. That is beautiful. <laughs> you know, since then, I've been seeing a lot more signs on the highways, on the roads. If you lose your child, do not wait 24 hours to call. Those are the new billboards all over the road lately. Oh, Go, so great. Let me tell you, though, right, yeah. God, and, and I sincerely mean that uh, you guys have done a fantastic job. You know, if you obviously strength the schedule, you're going out, you're playing everyone. It's a testament to what the guys have put in, like you said. And I wish you guys the luck tomorrow. Not that I think you need it, but, you know, go in, play the game you normally do play. And, uh, you know, if I wasn't a big man on campus these days, I'd be in the front row. Definitely on the on the right hand side. No offense, buddy. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> hey, games. You know you're playing at night, right? No, Seven o'clock start. Four thirty. Stratton had something with his daughter. He agreed to play at night first, and then he said his wife would strangle him if he played at night. So we had to move it up to four thirty. Oh, that's good news for NorthJerseySports.com. But because uh, I was going to say, if it was a seven o'clock you know, game, it still could happen at four thirty. But... It is at night and send them there. <laughs> he's probably I don't know what what he he's probably doing the uh, uh, middle school car wash. If you on, send so. Barton, please leave his shiny shoes at home. Last time he covered up the D Cup team, he came in with shiny shoes. I asked him if he was going to the prom, and then he didn't talk to me for six minutes. <laughs> well, when I, last I saw Barton at a game, it was at the uh, Bergen County softball quarterfinals. He looked like he was wearing his underpants. They were like polka dot shorts. Because he had <laughs> I don't know a what he was thinking. like penny loafer shined up and his collar popped. I was like, what is this guy doing? <laughs> right. Guys, come on. He went to St. Peter. Uh, please, excuse please, him alone, please. He's a good guy. Come on. Excuse me, Richie Ballgame, 1980 <laughs> called. It wants its Come on, guys. Please leave him alone. <laughs> But Gabs, you know, it, it, you know, if it was a night game, but it could look like this anyway uh, tomorrow down there at Sherla Boulevard. It's going to look like a scene out of the Outsiders. Stratton approaching from the south, uh, your crew rising to meet them there at, at a home plate on Sherla Boulevard. It's going to be fun because, uh, listen, two great uh, programs and two small school programs to be able to compete. You know, Weehawkins had a couple down years, but o- over the the course of Anthony Stratton's, we kid a lot about him, but the guy's a great baseball coach, and he's done some great things with that program. So, you know, just talk about uh, trying not to make it, I, I wouldn't say personal between you two, but just trying to keep your kids, you know, focused on playing the seven innings you got to play to uh, make it to the uh, We've been talking about that since we came into camp this year, that the only thing you control in this game is the next pitch, offensively or defensively, and we're going to keep that mentality. I mean, Stratton's teams always, they're never intimidated by the moment. They won't be intimidated coming here. They play really hard for him. I mean, what he's doing with them is absolutely outstanding to have them in the sectional final. Uh, they beat us my second year to go to the final, and then we beat them to go to the final in 2012. So, I mean, it's both both games were at us, both great games. I mean, I think it's going to be another good one tomorrow. How much does that loss last year down in Times River drive your guys? All over our weight room. I mean, it's on the mirrors in front of the squat rack. It's, it's next to the exit sign. It says 82 in the weight room. I mean, our kids really bought in in the off season. That was the ultimate goal. We just made one rule that we wouldn't talk about it once the season started. You know what I mean? We wanted to make sure we took care of business first, and then once you get in the tournament, the first goal is to win your section, and then we can talk about it. But they've been kind of fired up by that since then. I mean, I had taped the Shore article from NorthJerseySports.com that it ends Richfield season on every one of my baseball players' locker for the first day of camp. So when they got into school, they saw it, and that's kind of how we set the tone for our season. You hear that, Doctor Cirillo? I mean, that's a guy. That's a guy. Listen, it's motivation, but it's well, also it's, promotion. It's more oh, material. So you know, I know you're good at that, but uh, you know, you were taught by the best <laughs> at Palisades Park High School, and when they did tell you that's as true. a senior that you could not play JV anymore, you had to turn <laughs> to the So hey, it, it happens to the best of them. And look, <laughs> if, if you can't go professional, you. Know Form your own radio station or whatever the hell you call this. That's right. Hey, listen, by the way, Gambardella. Joe, I don't like, Amber, I don't this like is bringing... True, this is a, this is I, a real I, question I have here. No fooling around. Is it true Richfield does have the prom tonight? Yeah, they do. So you're nervous about that because I think the kids are out dancing, jumping, celebrating. Is there a curfew? And Stratton is working the bar tonight, so keep that in mind. There, there's, Why do you there's think he's not on with us? 
there's a curfew for my team anytime we play on Saturday. It's been like that since they took over. They need to call me from a home phone, not a cell phone, so I know that they're home. I'm crazy enough to do a drive-by. Ask Doviak last year before the shore game was, uh, before the state final was our senior prom, and I went and got a limo and picked them up at 10 o'clock to make sure they made it home on time. Tomorrow we play at 4.30, but they'll be home right after the prom. Oh, it's it, it, it's the commitment. I mean, it really, well, it's, it, it's tough. It, it's going on all over. These Thursday night props. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, Joe, you really save that much money by doing you know, it on I, Thursday you know, night? I mean, these, you know, and especially be ashamed of themselves. You know, we had ours last Thursday yeah, because right? they would charge twice as much on a Friday. So it's not fair to <laughs> serve in all seriousness. That's and that's true. why look, that's why yeah. fashion show is at the prom now. And you know what? Look at hey, Wally Pitt. Wally, Wally. <laughs> you know what? I hope he's like a part time job at the car wash in Woodridge. <laughs> he just tried to call way, in to the show. Because you know what? I could defer mine at Powell Park and take yours. Uh, okay. Sure, yeah. I'll give you a couple benefits. There's a couple benefits. You get into rich games yeah, for free. <laughs> I do need a press test, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah those absolutely. Those so Joe, uh, the hell out of you, man. Oh, they're right on top of you, too, down there. And plus, there's nowhere to shoot pictures, so you got to actually put yourself in the line of fire. And I mean, you could die covering Richfield baseball coaches with no those about Kansas City Royals socked up to their kneecaps. It's, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Joe, talk about uh, games I'm talking to here. The program itself. And uh, Joe Sute- if I get one more Joe, Joe Cirillo can appreciate this because doing it at a small school to have this kind of sustained success. I mean, next year is going to be a different ball of wax. This is a great senior yeah. class that you have, obviously. But ha- how about just trying to keep it rolling at a small school? I'm not even necessarily talking about tomorrow's game, whatever. But, you know, whatever this season does end, and hopefully for you it ends in a state championship, you got to kind of start fresh next year. Uh, how about the challenges of small That's school That's what it baseball? is. Small school baseball is tough. I mean, it's kind of a year-round thing now. I mean, we've got to make sure we're in the weight room. we got to make sure they're behaving in school. It's not like we have competition where, like, if I lose my shortstop, I don't got another shortstop to plug in there. So you got to coach <laughs> mentality as well as baseball X's and O's at all times. I mean, i got to give the kids credit, like I said, though. They have to be fully bought in. It comes from the parents. Like, I'm a little crazy. I send home, like, a contract that the parents have to sign about behavior in school and being on time and all this stuff that I kind of stole from Coach Fusey, but I think it makes them accountable all year round. And when you're accountable for something, you take pride in something. You take pride in something, it reflects on the baseball field, and it's kind of more than baseball. And, and Joe, I'm jumping in here, too, because I know what you do, and it's a credit to you and a credit to the program. You know, again, the off season, this guy's going to schedule 30 more games for his team. And come next year, those underclassmen with very little varsity experience will be ready. And he's going to win his 15 to 20 games again. And you know what? As far as I'm concerned, whether you're a small school or big school, hey, look at Emerson, man. Karsich is a legend. But did anyone think they would right. be section finals tomorrow? Did anyone think yeah. they would be as good as they are with a first-year head coach? You know what? The guys constantly, 12 months a year, are buying in. Joe has made those rich field boys believe and listen, it's it's a whole new, it's it's a passion now. It's not just a game. Yeah, and they also had a successful basketball season too. I mean, you, you, yeah. eight games. You know, Cirillo at the first sign of a, a weak class coming in. I mean, he bolted. He went and got his 14th degree and got into the administration. I mean, he left the Pal Park listen, program high and dry. The first time, I had to retire. It felt like Jordan. So I have to come back again. You know what? I'm just going to be a player coach and try <laughs> to find some eligibility. Now, Joe. As a Pal Park guy, you know the Tigers are near and dear to my heart. I mean, can we get a can we can we go to the board meeting get a contract here? I mean, this guy's right across the border in Ridgefield. You hear him; he's got him signing contracts. He's picking kids up. Yeah, he's I doing it right. Contract. If they want I mean, to co-op, we'll, I'll we... talk to their superintendent and we'll co-op. We'll just ride their wagon right now. <laughs> No, I just want to steal their coach. I mean, I miss the glory days of Pal Park baseball. Well, there was nothing right. better than Ridgefield Pal Park when it was good, though. Those were some good games. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was great. Joe uh, Gambardella, listen, I, I'm punch drunk here. Joe Cetera, not here. Joe Cirillo, on the phone. Joe Gambardella, listen, on the phone. Cirillo's enough so to I, I, though. You got, you got thank you, Joe. Joe, Cirillo. I appreciate it. Lunch is on me tomorrow. Thank you. <laughs> Swing over with the limo. We'll get a little share of pizza <laughs> for everybody. And uh, 
And then we'll get NorthJerseySports.com. I'll put my best man on that game tomorrow and see if we can't get it covered. Joe Gambardella, the head coach of the Fighting Ridgefield Royals. Congratulations on everything you've accomplished so far. Good luck tomorrow against uh, Weehawken. And, you know, we will be talking to you and about you uh, often. Thank you, man. I appreciate everything. Well, Dr. Cirillo, that was interesting stuff there with Joe Gambardella. But our uh, former co-host really took a beating in that segment. And, and, you know, I'm glad we say former. Um, let's not even mention him once again. He's finished. Um, hey, life goes on. you got to pick yourself up in the morning, dust yourself off, and go back to work. That's right. I mean, the sun will rise tomorrow for him. It's okay. You know, uh, you know, people have let great opportunities slip through their fingers in the past. I mean, look at Pete Best. He you got know, thrown you know, out of the Beagles. You know, what, you know what worries me, though? As an administrator, as a superintendent, right. I, I, I constantly get resumes. I constantly look at letters of interest. And, and, you know, if and when I was to look at that former co-host of yours resume, right? I, I'm going to tell you, one of the last things I need to see is someone – that's got ants in the pants. The guy's been to five different schools in the last eight years. It almost that's true. looks like when he's up for tenure, they they chase him. <laughs> you know, so I don't even know if he'd make the paper cut with me. Either that, though, or you know, he he's very adept at reading the tea leaves. You know, he Good could point. see the the writing on the wall when Good he heads point. for Green. So before pass. they chase him, he jumps ship. Right. Now you know, think about and it. Maybe he felt. You know, maybe he felt that way. It's New Milford for ten minutes. It's Glen Rock yep. for twenty five. And now it's yep. Woodridge. I, does the guy have a clue what the hell he's doing? I, I, I really, I, I, I don't know how to explain it. But, but then you know, again, hey, but then again, he'll remind you. Well, when we played Cirillo and Pal Park, they never beat us. Oh, please, right. wake up and get over it. Worry about yeah, having your have, son, would you? <laughs> he does have certain things that he goes back to all the time. And then, now this is a perfect segue because I'm at the Bergen County Tournament Final. You know, I'm a complete journalist, Joe. I mean, well, I, you know, well, I, I'm there. When the action is happening, I'm there. Well, not so many I'm, people show up to work at 4 p.m. and finish at 7, so go ahead. <laughs> All right. So I'm walking up to the field around, uh, I don't know, one forty-five on Sunday after working on a Sunday because oh, okay. I get out there, you know, Excuse me, bye. right, for the Bergen County Final. And I, I'm like, I know that guy. Who is that guy getting some award? I walk up to the field and I see my former co-host. Well, at the time he was my present co-host before he decided to turn into Joey Prom Queen. <laughs> he's uh, accepting an award for service to Bergen County baseball, Are and you he's thanking kidding people. Me? Yeah, Are no, you he, he was thank. Yeah, he had a whole bio in the program of the Bergen County tournament final. I mean, that's the one that people go to, and he's thanking people, everybody who's been a big. You know what? Let me uh, tell you. Let me tell you. I don't know who he knows. And I'm not going to finish the second part of that sentence, but, <laughs> but this is absurd. You know what? He obviously was the biggest contributor this year to the T-shirt donations. Yeah, you know, it's, it almost, it's almost like when you have a dinner. You know, and look, you know, no joke here, but if we really wanted to fill up our, our banquet for the Hall of Fame, we'd yes. recommend you know, that you get us six tables. Right. But come right. on. What, are they kidding me? You yeah. know what? The integrity he... of that tournament just took a hit. You're going to honor <laughs> someone like him? What right. the hell has he done? Yeah, I agree. Now, listen, he, he it was the perfect opportunity, too, because it was in writing. It goes, you know, thanking Coach Servino, uh, you know, all my players that have played for me. I mean, really heart-wrenching stuff. I mean, it brings a tear to you. I, wouldn't you think, like, maybe last sentence, you know, Joe Sutera is also the co-host of Talking Baseball and NorthJerseySports.com. I mean, that's a captive audience. Listen, that's the people who are there to show. see the Bergen County show where he holds you and your esteemed program. It means nothing I, to him. He blew you no. off to put on yep. a cummerbund and bow tie tonight. <laughs> he doesn't care about you. Listen, you do what you want. At the end of the night, you want to dial him up again? Do what you're, do what you're happy with. But at the end of the day, listen to what your buddy Gambardella said. And as a matter of fact, Gambardella's tight with Zatera, so he spoke from the heart. He yes. said it was a step up. <laughs> Unbelievable. So uh, I can't. Right. You know what? Let's not mention him, please. You're, you're, I'm not going to sleep well tonight. All right, so let's talk about the Bergen County Baseball right. Tournament. So let's happen. talk about it. It's five letters. B-O-S-C-O. Yes. Next. It's, what's on, what's it's next true. on your agenda? <laughs> well, I do want to mention two things from the Bergen County Final. Listen, and there's something I'm going to say. Bergen Catholic was great, man. They did a nice job, and all the the, the public did a beautiful job, as they always do. It's 
You know, hey, it's, it's one of the best run programs in the state, all kidding aside. I was a part of it for a few years. Um, you know, just to go out. I, you know, as as much as I'm I'm happy and, and proud to talk about it, I'm I'm sort of turned off that he got an award. I don't get it. <laughs> right. I would, I would well, let's talk you about even tell me that actually. <laughs> Let's let's talk a little bit about yeah Bergen Catholic as you mentioned made a great run to get yeah. to the final uh, and you know they they hit the ball and they yeah. played with Bosco uh, Bosco just too much though you know that when when your number eight and your number nine hitter are, are going to hit back to home back to back home runs in the second inning of a county final you know you're going to be all right oh yeah and uh, you know that happened for them uh, Colin Dana and Frank Nigro both hit home runs in the second inning. Josh Shaw hit one in the first. Josh Shaw became the third player in the history of the Bergen County Tournament to be named, named the MVP in two straight seasons. All he did in the final was go four for four with two home runs, two runs scored, five RBIs. I mean, the kid was great. And I just want to talk. I want to play this interview that I did with uh, Bosco head coach Mike Rooney after the game. You know, Bosco. Well, I'll let him say it. There were whispers coming into the tournament that Bergen, you know, had been played them twice. The intimidation factor was gone. Bergen legitimately was on a roll going into the final. Uh, they beat St. Joe's seven to one in the semifinals. They had a good win, an escape, you know, one of those morale building wins uh, the weekend before. And uh, I caught up with Coach Rooney afterwards. Here's what he had to say. What, what, what kind of things are you going to have to talk to beat the team three times? You know, um, they're a better team right now. They're the hot team. But in our defense, you know, we've been hot since March. And uh, we're a pretty good club. And we're used to teams coming at us. And they are a heck of a program. And everything that they've accomplished, they deserve. But we're pretty good, too. And we really embrace the challenge of people saying that this was going to be a game perhaps where we faltered or perhaps this was the game where it was difficult to beat the team three times. You know, it's, it's really simple. you got to go execute the game. No one here thought this was the third time we were playing them. We were playing them for the Bergen County Championship. Early outfits works. I think we've been looking for that since we come, we've come to Demers. And uh, I really have to be honest and credit the opposing pitchers all the way all the way back to our opening round of Fairlawn. Um, hey, you're facing good you know, ones. Heitler. Yeah, Heitler, exactly. A Remo from Mawa last yep. week was fantastic. And uh, you know, sometimes, uh, uh, yep, you know, sometimes it's... Not necessarily a matter of our failure. You know, it's just high school baseball, so you have to give credit to the other team's success at times, and that's that's basically what I think we ran into a little bit. But I think offensively, we're we're ready to have a day like we had today. Now you ask the question, and you got to get back up for Tuesday. Yeah, but you know what? It's, it's just a continuation of every single thing this year. You know, we, we've had big wins and we've had games right after. So I don't know what these kids would do if they didn't have a big game in front of them. You know, so we'll we'll, we'll relax on Monday, and I promise you we'll be at the field on Tuesday. Hey, Joe, they've been hot since March. Well, the weather has it. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's the only thing. Yeah, yeah. but uh, that's a good point. You know. From the from a media standpoint, you're always looking for you know where's the 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 chink in the Bosco armor. It's just it's not there. You know you you try to manufacture. Listen, not just me. Other guys who are covering the tournament, you're looking for storylines. Obviously, it's hard to write the same thing over and over. And uh, you know there was some hopeful. Not that it's easy to root for Bergen Catholic either for public school guys, but you know there were some uh, storylines. And uh, you know credit to Coach Rooney, he got his kids to take notice. Yeah, I, I, again, I think. You know, it, it is obviously a uphill battle for every public to go up against the programs such as the Boscos and the Joes and the Bergens. And, you know, I, I see that, you know it, it'll just make it that much sweeter if and when right. one of the publics do knock them off. Um, but, you know, credit does go to those guys, man, working their tails off. You know, it is high school baseball. You know, you know. Look at Ramsey. Tomorrow, the kid will break the home run record, probably. And that, think about it. Mike Trout is a MVP <laughs> of the Major League Baseball, American League. Are you kidding me? You know, the kid in our backyard right now. It just speaks to the caliber of high school baseball right here. Um, it, it is, it's phenomenal. I think what the coaches do on a daily basis, and it goes beyond that. I think what the parents put in, what what these Young athletes, you know, they have to buy in as well, and you know, it, it's it's a pleasure to be a part of. It's you know, obviously something I miss tremendously. Try to watch as many games and, and catch up as often as I can, but uh, 
you know, hey, you got to tip your cap to the best, and that's all you can do. Yes, I mean, and uh, Ashton Barzell from Ramsey, oh, yeah. uh, the one you just mentioned oh, yeah. there. I mean, I, I, I was at the game against Paquanic the other day, and when he tied the record, and you know, Paquanic was doing everything they could. They in the at bat that he tied the record, he was behind in the count one and two, fought off a tough pitch, got one he could handle, and I mean, just ripped it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like he, the kid's only seeing one or two pitches a game. He's getting walked. I, I, I forget who it was, but a team previous, it might have been Dumont, I don't even know, but uh, walked him with the bases loaded to force in a run rather than allow him to drive in four with one swing of the bat. Right. Uh, right. That's the kind of respect. I mean, that's Barry Bonds. Listen, I'm, I'm not comparing him to a- any professional athlete, but that's what they used to do to Barry Bonds, too. Sure. He just couldn't sure. figure out a way to get him out. Uh, and he's going to go up to Lakeland, and he's going to have a shot to do it. The only way I, I see him not doing it is if they don't pitch to him, and there's a good chance they won't. They've They've played 28 games this year, and he's got 18 home runs. That is ridiculous. I mean, you pace that out over a major league season. I think it's uh, 1,043 home runs. So, uh, you know, it's, it's just you know, it's, again, it's a, a credit to him. It's a credit to his family, his coaching staff, and you know, the kid deserves all the recognition he gets. Like, I, I hope he does break the record, and if he doesn't, he's got nothing to be ashamed of. That's phenomenal. To just be in that same conversation as as a Mike Trout. How about that? He, uh, yes. Last thing. Go ahead. Please. Last thing I want to talk about here. We're wrapping up the show, but also, in I mentioned earlier that Bergen Catholic beat St. Joseph in the semifinals of the Bergen County tournament, which marked the end of the brilliant run through Bergen County tournaments that St. Joseph Regional Head Coach Frank Salvano has had. Twenty eight years as the leader of the uh, Green Knights up there multiple championships, and really one of the most colorful characters ever to come through this way. Uh, that was his swan song that lost 7-1 to Bergen Catholic. I caught up with him after the game, and you can tell, I mean, you know, uh, listen, I, I have, I think it's safe to say, I've had Italians on this show all year long, Cetera, Gambardella, Cirillo, a million of them, and uh, you're an emotional people. Is that, would, would, I, would, would that be okay to say, Dr. Cirillo, without you being know, I, I uh, think taken You know, I think when and if you do drink red wine, you know, it's near and dear to your heart. And, you know, I think the organs, not to sound like a true MD, um, you know, they're all intertwined. So the tears can fall from the eye once in a while. That, that is okay. Yes. You know, even for you, Corey, once in a while you should try it. Nah, I'm, I'm the hardy type. But anyway, I caught up with Frank Salvano after his uh, final Bergen County tournament game. And just, I basically asked him the question, how you feeling? And here's how he answered. The last inning, I was taking that look around here and it's uh, oh, that's, that's what I'm going to miss. I mean, it was 7 1 and I looked around. I saw some, a lot of my people there. Uh, Joe Savino Sr. again came to, to watch me play. I wish we could have done a better job from him. And uh, a lot of my kids came up. Fred uh, Wise came up from Virginia. And uh, I just wish we could have done a better job from a lot of friends. But hey, I have absolutely no qualms and no complaints. It's been a, it's been a dream. 28 years for me, man. It's uh, a dream, and like, uh, you know, next week I'm going to wake up, you know, and get back to the real world. But, uh, I mean, uh, uh, how can you have a complaint? We, we, you know, what our program, you know, has done in this tournament. I and mean, even this year, made it to this Final Four. So, uh, right now, I know I'm going to miss it. I know I'm going to miss this place, man. It's like I, like I said to Mark, I, it's like our home away from home, you know. Today we got thrown out of our house. <laughs> Today they got thrown out of their house, but it was a great run for Frank Salvano up there at St. Joseph Reed. No, all kidding aside, uh, listening I, to Frank right there makes me want to put on The Godfather or, you know, <laughs> Frank Sinatra or something nice. It, you know, he really, you know, you, you might want to lead in with that song later. <laughs> you're, you're not kidding. All right, listen, Dr. Sutera, thanks for picking up the phone on short notice. Dr. Sutera, uh, you now, did a great... now we're going to name the, the son of a gun a doctor. You did I do it again? Did I, did I do it again? I'm not... Dr. Sutera. <laughs> Dr. Cirillo, I, I appreciate you picking up the phone on short notice. You gave us a good two and a third innings out of the bullpen here. Thank you. I think uh, you did a great job. I, got, I picked up the save, and uh, the important thing is, not only did I save the game, I probably saved your future and your radio show's uh, career. Now, my only piece of advice as you proceed in your endeavors, you do have to go back to get a high school diploma. Second, <laughs> it's imperative. And my mom taught me this at a very young age. You'll best be known by the company you keep. 
So distance oh. yourself from those South Bergen ites, namely <laughs> Joe Satara. Have a wonderful <laughs> evening. Follow the leader. <laughs>